Last month, Airbus shared that it's been talking to Rolls-Royce about a brand new narrow-body aircraft coming sometime in late 2030. But a new aircraft from Airbus? What would this look like? Today, we're going to go over the three new possible aircraft that Airbus could be working on, what they'll look like, and where they'll fly. So I hope you're ready to strap in and do a deep dive on the future of Airbus. For the last 40 years, Airbus has been creating some of the very best aircraft flying around the world, but they've all been of a very specific time, namely a tube with two engines. Whether or not this is the future trend going forward is definitely something that we need to explore, but we'll begin this with this new narrow body aircraft that they've been trying to bring to the market by late 2030. Since entering the aviation market, the company has come up with various different models to fill every niche. This is everything from the small A220 up to the lumbering Airbus A380, which is one of my favorite aircraft. But since then, the airframe manufacturer has completely slowed down their aircraft releases, only coming up with the Airbus A321 XLR for long range routes. With our last previous aircraft, the Airbus A350, having cemented itself as definitely an industry legend, but now no longer the new hotness. So this new aircraft design, when they finally announce it, will definitely be something brand new. So that leads us to last month. At the most recent air show in England, Julie Kitchener, the chief sustainability officer of Airbus, told aviation magazine Simple Flying that her company is looking to continue improving aircraft fuel efficiency and that they're in the talks with engine manufacturer Rolls-Royce for a new concept of a new narrow body aircraft. So they're talking to Rolls-Royce for engine designs for this new aircraft, which makes a lot of sense because these are the only two major things that change with new aircraft releases. While the details of this stage are few and far between, we do have some predictions about this new narrow body aircraft. The first is about the design and structure. Composite materials and lightweight design are critical for fuel efficiency because they want to make sure that this aircraft is light and can operate at high altitude airports without any issues. Additionally, there will be a brand new engine technology, possibly including hybrid engines, stuff that uses either electrical generation or a new type of fuel to power in joint with the current uh, fuel. And also it will very likely have a traditional tube and wing design, uh, especially for a small narrow body aircraft. Because essentially Airbus doesn't really see the blended wing lifting body um, as the most immediate option for the company. And I'll explain why in a moment. Next up, let's talk about the wings. We know that this aircraft will have longer, thinner wings with uh, blended wing tips for improved efficiency. In addition, it's possible to have a larger wing span. They will be movable and foldable to accommodate this larger sort of wing surface area. So like the Boeing 777X where the wing tips fold up, we might actually see on a narrow body aircraft. This is because on the Airbus A320, the wings are actually not the largest that they could possibly be for the fuel efficiency and range. If you were able to increase the wing size on the Airbus A320, you would get a lot more from this small aircraft design. And of course the wings will use composite materials just like the fuselage to bring those efficiencies forward. As we mentioned, this will also have new engine technology, uh, hybrid engines that are using say hydrogen fuel or electrical generation to improve efficiency and reduce the amount of fuel burnt. And of course there is the possible reconfiguration of where the engines are a la 737 MAX, <laughs> touch wood with that one, where the engines are moved for better uh, power delivery or fuel efficiency. So where does this leave Airbus in terms of its current range with this new narrow body? Well, it does mean some of the models need to shift around. We have the Airbus A220, which will be renamed into the A221. 
and is expected to replace the small models of the Airbus A318 and Airbus A319 because they're much more fuel efficient for those small capacities. This may also see the Airbus A221-500, which is the Airbus A220-500, which is a further stretch of the Airbus A220 frame to fill up those capacities to roughly rival the Airbus A320, but it remains to be seen if they want to go that route because they are starting to compete with themselves. But we still will see the Airbus A321 offered to customers because that platform is still very flexible. So that one's not going anywhere, just like we saw with the 737. And so why the blended wing body isn't an immediate focus for Airbus is because of all the issues with it comes with creating a brand new radical design of an aircraft. For one, you have to consider all the safety problems that come with this type of aircraft. For example, you need to look at evacuation procedures or what if there's a fire or how uh, if there's dangerous cargo on board or if there's an impact event, how this will affect the safety of the passengers on board. And with a brand new aircraft, there's no research done for such a thing. We see some of these designs that have got like a thousand passengers on board a blended wing and you've got to wonder how on earth do you evacuate that in under at 90 seconds. Following that, we also need to think about airports. Airports might need to be completely redesigned for uh, these blended wing bodies. If you imagine aircraft that is able to load from the front and back, a blended wing body may not have the same operations, meaning that airports need to be completely redesigned, which is not a great idea. We know how reluctant the airports were to spend money to accommodate the Airbus A380 with its three jet bridges, so bringing an even more uh, crazy aircraft like a blended wing body probably won't go down well for airport corporations. So this new aircraft from Airbus will fit in that magic gap of 250 passengers up to 500 nautical miles. And at this point, five, six, seven years into my aviation career, I'm starting to see the same arguments about this mysterious middle of the market aircraft that all of the airlines want, but no aircraft maker will make for years. So this is definitely a repeating pattern, but I can see that this aircraft if you're going to redesign from the ground up, would accommodate that market sector. With, as I said before, the Airbus A220 accommodating everything below it. And so you're probably wondering, Nick, this must be a theoretical video. Well, no, Airbus has actually already started to hire professionals for two new product lines. We've seen this over the last couple of years that Airbus has been putting out feelers for new engineers and aerospace manufacturer uh, uh, experts to uh, accommodate everybody in the uh, product chain into one industry to develop a new aircraft. Whether or not the aircraft will start its prototype development process in the next couple of years remains to be seen, but we know that with this deadline of late 2030, we're only coming up to about 15 years to go, and generally aircraft take around about a decade to bring to the market. So I expect there will be some announcement from Airbus about this new aircraft design very soon. So what about the other two types of aircraft that Airbus will possibly bring to the market in the near future? Well, the second of these is the Airbus A350neo. As we've seen a Neo, which is a new engine option for their other product lines like the Airbus A320 and Airbus A330, and unfortunately not the Airbus A380 as much as Emirates demands it, I fully expect us to see the Airbus A350 get a Neo option as soon as the engine technology is ready and the current customers have had their orders fulfilled. Now, this new aircraft would have a larger capacity, potentially with a stretch, increasing the a number of passengers by about 20 or 40 passengers on board uh, to rival the upcoming Boeing 777X. I know when the Boeing 777X is sort of starting to gain popularity,
clarity with the market and airlines see that it's a proven aircraft and want to buy it, which we're going to start to see happen quite soon, Airbus is going to need to bring a competitor to that market. And it's quite interesting because we saw a airline struggling to choose between the 777X and the Airbus A350 and ultimately go with Airbus, which was Qantas who needs these aircraft to do these ultra long distance routes from Sydney to London and Sydney to New York. Now, had the 777X been available on the market, it's very possible that uh, Qantas would have gone with Boeing, not choosing the Airbus A350, which they eventually did. Now, I can see Qantas snapping up a Neo, a Neo version of this uh, aircraft because they desperately want these increased fuel efficiencies for a flight that is pushing 20 hours. So I can fully expect to see uh, this uh, Neo version of the Airbus A350 to be announced in the next two to three years. Just as Boeing is about to bring its new uh, star of the show aircraft to the general masses. As for the third aircraft that Airbus could bring to the market, this one's where we start to get a little bit more out there, but I've been putting my ear to the ground and I feel like that this one is very possible, that they may enter the turboprop market with a hydrogen or electric aircraft for short range, up to 70 seats or around 2000 nautical mile routes, one with zero emissions to meet their current environmental targets which uh, I'll get into details in a minute about these electric engines. Now, I know that Airbus has been working on this concept for a while and it's part of their great interest. We've seen at various air shows them showing off a small hybrid aircraft that can only carry, you know, four to six passengers as part of sort of a you know, internal sort of flying car city routes. And there's no reason why this technology couldn't be scaled up or combined with existing turboprop technology. And it's funny because we actually do need this. Here in Australia, we have an airline called Rex that flies small Saab aircraft seating around 30 to 40 passengers. But the problem for Rex is that there is no new aircraft in the marketplace that seats 30 to 40 passengers uh, and are designed for these rural countryside routes flying around sort of regional areas of a country under 2000 nautical miles. So this is a market, especially in Australia, Africa, perhaps uh, parts of the more remote areas of uh, North America, which is currently underserved. Not everybody wants to get a Q400 turboprop, and especially as we get these new uh, technologies for these sort of hybrid engines, uh, we will start to see this market become very attractive for a manufacturer like Airbus. So what is Airbus actually waiting for to implement these three new aircraft? Well, as we said before, it's these ultra high bypass jet engines. Basically, Airbus needs a new engine breakthrough like the GE9X on the Boeing 777X that has such a great power to weight ratio that aircraft can fly further on less fuel. So obviously Airbus expects these new engines to be created. That's why they've been talking to Rolls-Royce before they sit down and start to develop these new aircraft. Because you don't want to bring a new fuselage or a new sort of body of an aircraft to the market using existing engines. Because the gained fuel efficiency wouldn't be that great and competitors will be able to just sit and wait for these new engines and then bring their new aircraft to the market making Airbus look very silly indeed. And why Rolls-Royce in particular? Well, it turns out that Rolls-Royce doesn't supply any engines to the narrow body aircraft market. So for them to create a new ultra high bypass engine for the narrow body market would be a whole new revenue stream for them, especially if it comes on a brand new shiny Airbus aircraft. One of the other considerations to keep in mind is that Airbus is still massively producing the Airbus A320. In fact, there is a colossal backlog for this plane. They're currently producing them at around about a rate of 60 aircraft a month. And you can imagine that if they're going to introduce a new aircraft to the market, it's got to have such a long lead time that they can extract as much profit from the current orders. 
you wouldn't want airlines cancelling their current planes to try and snap up this new aircraft, especially when this new production line may not be as efficient as the current one with the Airbus A320. So again, it is all just coming down to money and business and Airbus trying to make sure that they squeeze the aircraft market as much as possible. And I'll close on this little interview that Airbus did with Bloomberg, where Airbus said, as a leading aircraft manufacturer, we're looking at many ways to advance our product line. There are many studies, but not all see the light of day. But you know what? I have a great feeling about these three.